meditating is like looking for something you've lost. You have a general idea where it is. And so you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, the same place, looking for it. Say you know that you've dropped something in your room. You don't find it the first time, you go back again, looking all over the room again. You don't find it the second time, you keep looking in the same spot. You know that it has to be there. And you know that the third and fourth and fifth trips around, you have to be even more and more and more observant all the time to find what it was. It's the same way with the meditation. You keep going over the same spot over and over and over again. The body here in the present moment. Sometimes you focus on the breath. Sometimes you go through the different parts of the body, like the bones. Basically, what you're looking for is right here. And the reason you don't see it the first time, or the second time, or the third time is because you're not looking carefully enough. That's one reason. The other is that you may have the wrong idea of what you're looking for. Like looking for mushrooms. There's a kind of a mushroom called the Horn of Plenty. And people who go looking for it in the forest say, in the beginning, you can't see it at all. And then someone who's really expert at looking for those mushrooms come in the same spot that you went over many, many times, they find lots of them. And the problem is you have to have seen at least one to get an idea of what it looks like. And once you see it, it basically looks like a little hole in the ground. Once you see it, then you see it all over the place. And so in that case, the problem is maybe not so much that you're not looking carefully enough, it's just that you have the wrong mental image. And you're trying to match up your mental image with what you see here, and it doesn't match up. So you don't see anything. So these are two issues you have to think about when you're focusing the present moment. One is, are you focusing, paying attention with enough precision, really looking carefully? As I mentioned this afternoon, if you find yourself getting bored with the meditation, it's because you're not really paying careful attention. You say, well, I've been here before, same breath, in, out, what else is there? If you really want to see what it has to offer, you have to look more carefully, and then more carefully. And at the same time, you may have to work with your mental image of the breath. When you breathe in, exactly where do you feel that the breath has to come in? Which muscles do you have to use? What sensations do there have to be to let you know that now the breath is coming in, now it's going out? And then you can question those preconceived notions. Do you have to have those sensations with each in-breath and out-breath? Does the breath have to come in and out that way? Can you breathe in other ways? You notice this, especially when there are parts of the body that seem to be more tired than others, more tense than others. Maybe they're being overworked by the breathing. Maybe it's time to let other muscles take up some of the slack and allow these muscles to relax. These are some of the questions you want to ask yourself when you have trouble settling with the breath, or it doesn't feel comfortable, or you feel that the more you work with the breath, the tighter and more tense it gets, back off a little bit. And see if reconceiving the breath, having a different picture in your mind of the breath, helps you settle down with a comfortable breath more easily. Many people complain that they seem to be out of touch with their bodies. A lot of times it's that it's their mental pictures they have of how the mind relates to the body. That those, are the, those are the things that are getting in the way. So you want to play with those preconceived notions. Allow yourself to think in other ways. The breath coming in the back of the next say, the breath energy coming there. What would that be like? Or the breath coming in and out the middle of the chest, coming in and out. Right above the navel. All sorts of places you could have it coming in and out. See if changing your mental image of the breath changes the way you experience your body. Or consciously locate the different parts of the body in your awareness. This is what that bone meditation is good for. Ask, where are the bones at the tips of the fingers right now? 
and get a sense of where the tips of your fingers are. And many times you'll find that your awareness of the body is this big, sort of undifferentiated field. And it takes a little while to figure out exactly where the tips of the fingers are, especially when you're sitting here trying to relax. It's like a science fiction story I read one time where they had a were working on a machine to transport, teleport people from Earth to the moon. And there was one bug they hadn't worked out, which was that the bones transported more slowly than the rest of your tissues. So you'd put a rabbit in one end, and then on the moon would come out this kind of rabbit pie, or rabbit pool, basically, waiting for the bones to come. And then the rabbit pool would, every now and then, would take shape, an ear would come out or a paw, so form it, forming out of this undifferentiated pool. Many times your awareness of the body seems to be that way. It's very little differentiation. Or sometimes you have a very weird idea of where your neck may be or where your, your arm is, is connected to the body. So try to explore exactly where are these parts of your body right now. Try to get in touch. Look more carefully at which muscles or which sensations correspond to which muscles, which parts of the body. And as you explore this part, you see there's an awful lot here. And as you deal with this issue, you find that other issues in the mind, especially the way the mind relates to the body, they get highlighted as well. So that simply by looking at this same place over and over and over again, you really get to know the territory. may not quite yet be what, you, what you're what you looking for. After all, what are we looking for? We're looking for nirvana. Nibbana. But before you can get there, you have to discover a lot of subtleties in the body and a lot of subtleties in the mind in the present moment. And that can be done only by being very careful and very observant. So no matter how many times you've sat down and watched the breath, no matter how many times you've sat down and contemplate of the body. Just keep doing it over and over again. It's like losing something extremely valuable. You don't count the number of times that it takes to look. As long as you haven't yet found it, you keep looking, looking, looking. Try looking from different angles. Get very thorough in how you sort of comb through the rug there in the room to find whatever it was that you lost. And then ask yourself, well, maybe it's fallen down it, and it's in a position where it's not what the shape or what I look at is not what I've conceived. Say it fell down upside down. So you've got to think of what it would look like upside down, change your perception of it. And just keep looking, 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 come again and again and again. You'll find there are lots of things. Many times you don't find the valuable you were looking for, but you may find that there's a lot of other interesting stuff. Like that far side cartoon where the woman is looking for a hairbrush and under a sofa and she finds a flattened version of some friends that just happen to be under the, the sofa cushion. There are a lot of things that have been lost right here in the present moment. Some of them more valuable than others, but also there's the ultimate happiness that's been lost right here. You know there's something valuable, so you keep looking. It's a question of being really thorough in the looking that's going to make all the difference. Think of it as a treasure hunt. So many times we think of meditation as a matter of programming. If you program the mind to see in certain ways, then you're going to get the enlightenment. See everything as impermanent, stressful, and not self, and you get a prize. But the danger there is that you can you can fake it. You can try to clone your preconceived notion of what that should be. You get the cloned version and wonder where the prize is. It's better to think of it as this treasure hunt. You're not quite sure what you're looking for. You're given a set of standards. You're looking for something that 
the three characteristics don't apply to. So whatever you come up with, it's like having a method of testing gold. You find something that looks like gold, you put it through the test, and if it's not gold, well, you toss it off. Or if it's something that's useful for other purposes, you put it aside. But you know that that's not the ultimate thing you're looking for. You keep looking again, testing things again. And that's all you need. If you have too many preconceived notions of what you're looking for, as I said, sometimes those can get in the way. So you dig up something and test it against the standards that the Buddha t established. If it qualifies as part of the path, you keep developing it. If it's something else, well, you put it aside. And ultimately, you'll find the valuable. It's there, right here. As John Lee said, the, the Buddha found an awakening right at the tip of his nose. So the potential was always there. The question is, why did he find it then? Well, he, because he had brought the various factors of the mind together, various qualities of the mind together in the right proportions. So he really could see very clearly, very carefully, very precisely. So keep coming back here, coming back here. And don't do it with a sense of frustration or boredom. Try to be good-natured about the whole thing. And there's no doubt that you'll find what you're looking for. And it will ex surpass your expectations of what it might be. <laughs>